Good afternoon to you folks. I'm Eric Von Anken stepping away from soccer for just a few minutes because we got some breaking news on the Space Coast. You are looking live at a Falcon 9 rocket with two astronauts on top on that capsule, that Dragon crew capsule again. This is a SpaceX mission. Essentially, part of the role of this is rescuing the Boeing mission that did not go so well. So two firsts today, first in a long time and first ever. First in a long time is, as I said, just these two astronauts on the right. That is Commander Nick Haig, a Space Force colonel, and on the left is a Russian cosmonaut. And there will be two empty seats, which hasn't happened since 2021. Remember the first test flight of the SpaceX Dragon crew capsule only had Bob and Doug, just two astronauts. They are leaving those two empty seats to bring home the two that have been on the space station far longer than they expected, Butch and Sonny. They will bring them home in just a few months. The other first here is for the first time we're going to launch in several decades from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. We got our Space Coast, co excuse me, Space Coast correspondent out there. News Six is James Barvero, who's covered many launches alongside me. And James, we are now just about four minutes from launch. Hey, Eric. Nice to join you on a Saturday here at the Cape. So yes, T minus three minutes in 30 seconds it's pretty remarkable because impulsively about two hours ago when it really started pouring here at the cape i thought how in the world is this going to happen but you have to quickly remember it doesn't matter what the weather was like an hour ago or two hours ago it matters what the weather is like at 117 when they're set to launch and they knew then that the skies were going to clear they were hoping just enough to get falcon 9 crew dragon and the diminished crew 9 off the ground for the first time from SpaceX's pad, launch pad 40 on the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station side here at the Cape. All the launches from SpaceX and the commercial crew program before this going back four years happening of course at pad 39A with the redundancy and the success of SpaceX's flights to the International Space Station and beyond with some of the fully private missions. They've been thinking more about adding another pad so NASA and SpaceX have been working on this for two years to add that launch tower and to add that crew access arm so that astronauts Nick Haig and cosmonaut Alex Gorbanov could walk into that capsule, get ready to blast off to space. We can call it a rescue mission here. If you ask NASA, the spin is that it's just another crew rotation. Of course, the story all summer has been how Starliner failed to bring back Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams, what could have been just an eight-day mission to the space station back in June is looking now more like eight months. So this is their lifeboat now, this Crew Dragon capsule going to the space station. The two previous crew members on Crew 9, Zena Cardman, she was cut along with another astronaut. zena has been on commentary today and it's been pretty remarkable listening to her. She sounds like a complete professional knowing that they had to open up two seats to bring Butch and Sonny home. Butch and Sonny now missing the holidays. But they, just as professional as well, just focusing on what they can control. And what we can control, as far as we know right now, is that countdown clock is at T-minus one minute and 30 seconds, everybody. This Falcon 9 rocket going to take off with a crew of two. The ninth full-length operational mission from SpaceX since 2020, along with being the first launch from this pad. There's a sonic boom warning, so SpaceX will attempt to land this booster here at the Cape. So about seven or eight minutes after launch, Eric, everybody, just be out, get your ears out for listening. That's become routine as well, so I think less people are paying attention. But it still gets your attention, undoubtedly, because it is so loud. It's coming. But let's send it back to you, Eric. It is coming for sure, James. Thank you. And as you said, so there is a 30% chance, at least that's what the meteorologists were saying, that this would not happen at 117. But James's point is, as long as the weather is clear at that very minute, when they are ready to put that rocket into the final countdown sequence and send it towards the space station. That is all that matters. We are just a few seconds now from launch again of only two astronauts at the top of that SpaceX capsule. Normally there are four, but this is, as James says, could be described as a rescue mission. Let's watch these live pictures of this Falcon 9 lifting off from the Space Coast in 35 seconds. 
That's our final go for launch. SpaceX reporting go and the crew reporting go. Seconds. Standing by for the first Command launch of 10, humans 9, from Space 8, Launch Complex 40. 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, ignition, ignition full power, and lift off of Crew 9, go Space up, go Falcon, go NASA. Lift off of Crew 9, now soaring to the International Space Station. One Alpha. Stage 1, full to the nominal. Copy, One Alpha. Those nine Merlin engines now providing 1.7 million pounds of thrust, propelling Falcon 9 and Crew 9 and continuing to get good calls from teams here on the ground. Of course, these incredible views mean we are just a little bit past 30 minutes in, or 30 seconds into our ninth rotational crew mission. Power, nominal. On board Dragon and Falcon 9 with good call outs for mission control that everything Stage is looking good. Down. With that, stage one is throttling down to pass through max Q, which is the period of maximum dam dynamic pressure on Falcon 9 during ascent. Max Q. Confirmation of max Q. Vehicle is supersonic. And that Falcon 9 is now traveling faster than the speed of sound. Stage one throttle up. Bravo means we're in the second and final abort mode for the first stage and continuing to get good performance. And that chill is underway. The crew is pulling just over two Gs at this point. Next up, we heard the engine chill on the second stage MVAC engine has begun, and then we will have Miko or main engine cut off, where the nine engines on the first stage will cut off ahead of the first and the second stages, and then will separate from one another. Then that single Merlin vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite and continue to carry crew nine to orbit while the first stage begins its journey back to Earth. Two minutes in, and the crew is now traveling over 2,600 miles per hour. Stage one is throttling down. Confirmation there from Mission Control that stage one is throttling down as we prepare for main engine cutoff. So far, so good. You heard the call out for main engine, engine cutoff line. coming up. That you means the first stage of the rocket is going to separate from the head. second stage. The There's second stage is attached to the astronaut capsule, where those two astronauts are probably having a good day, enjoying a little bit of extra leg room, uh, shoulder room, because again, there's only the two of them. This capsule is built to carry seven, but typically they put four people on board, leaving those two seats open for the Boeing Starliner astronauts early next year to come home with them on this SpaceX capsule. A lot of people have called this coming to the rescue. Uh, we know that folks along the Space Coast are having a good day. Here's a picture of them, our photojournalist extraordinaire, Goose Gosselin, behind the lens here at Jetty Park, because, hey, it's early Saturday afternoon. I know folks get to hang out by the water, and they get the treat of seeing a rocket go up with two people on board. That is a great spot. I've been there many times because you, if you're lucky, depending on, depending on how the wind blows, you get to feel and hear the rumble rolling across the river there, coming across the water of that rocket lifting off, and the weather cleared out just in time. Again, our Space, space Coast correspondent, James Barvero, was there at the Kennedy Space Center. And James, this is interesting because normally this launch of the Falcon 9 with astronauts is just a few miles behind you, but in this case now, it's over at the Space Force Station, a first time since the Apollo missions. It's pretty incredible, Eric. So our photojournalist DJ with me right now, he's got his camera aimed at the sky because like we've been telling you, there's gonna be a booster landing attempt. So we don't wanna miss that. And it's uh, DJ's first time ever recording a launch. So it's a thrill for him. So I just want him to soak it in, pay attention to that and see as much as we can see because it is still cloudy out here. We know they got the rocket off, but 
yeah, they just needed that perfect window, or not even perfect good enough, because yeah, it's still not a great weather day out here. But once that booster comes down, folks, if they are out at Jetty Park today, or the Cape Canaveral beaches, or Cocoa Beach beaches, they're gonna have a, a wonderful sight and a thrill. Or either way, they're gonna get interrupted, because it's, it's so loud. I know my dog back home in his room, he's gonna pay attention, because that's the one thing that startles him. But yeah, it's interesting not looking at pad 39A for the first time in four years for a SpaceX crewed mission. Looking at pad 40, which, we're talking so much about the Starliner crew. They launched at the first pad that's directly to the north of pad 40. That's pad 41, the ULA pad, with the Atlas V rocket that took Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams to space on Starliner back in June. And what could have been only an eight-day mission is now looking more like eight months. And Nick Hague and Alex Gorbanov's mission, the diminished crew of two, not four, they lose a month on the space station themselves this mission's been delayed for about a month while NASA was making the difficult decision of what to do about bringing the Starliner crew home. We know that ultimately they decided not to bring Starliner back with the crew. They said it was just too uncertain how those failing thrusters would perform and they had to consider the helium leaks too, so they didn't want to take the risk. And fortunately, Starliner did return safely and now they have the benefit of having the capsule on the ground and they can review everything that happened, get the data, and eventually NASA, they're, they're really doubling down on their confidence in Starliner. They talked about it yesterday at one of those press conferences. They said they're not writing off Boeing and Starliner just yet. They've um, only got maybe as many as five possible crewed missions to the station, and that's optimistically speaking. That's considering that the station should be retired by the end of the decade, so sometime between maybe 2026 and 2030, NASA still thinks they can pull this off with Starliner, and what a comeback story that will be because it, it's really had problems for five years now. And when you call this a rescue mission, NASA spins it like it's just another crew rotation and they're just extending Butch and Sonny's mission by by several months and being the professionals that they are, they're, they're willing to, to take that up. And, and, and James, we're looking back to the south now. Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna say, it looks like Go ahead, we're Eric. getting close. You're probably, you're, that's it coming down right behind you. <laughs> yeah, we're trying to spot it. It's cloudy over the Cape and um, DJ's a first timer out here, but yeah, he's got his camera pointed in the right direction. I, I told him from my experience. <laughs> Did you feel he it yet? He thinks it's landed actually. I'll, we didn't feel it, no, and it's only seven and a half minutes after launch, so typically I don't hear the sonic boom and see the booster landing until eight, so, okay, DJ was right, <laughs> yep, that's, that's, why, that's why I told him focus on the landing, and he, he nailed you got it. it. You got it, and, and James, you know, this is just one last point here, what's been really interesting about, you know, how, who, who spins it and how they spin it, right? The conversation about were the astronauts stranded on the space station and you right. know, NASA says rightly so, we could have brought them home at any time if we needed to, but, and so then, you know, the people will say, well, you know, then they are stranded and NASA's point is no, we just have a regular rotation of astronauts. Every six months we send a capsule up and we switch out the people and we bring them down and that's what we're doing. We're waiting until this regular, this next regular rotation because there's no urgency, there's no need to bring them down. Hence, they don't like the word stranded. That's right. It's been our responsibility really to decipher what's the truth here. Is it somewhere in between maybe how impulsively the public wants to call this just a disaster and how NASA just wants to call it maybe business as usual, working yeah. through adversity, learning, growing, that sort of thing. Eric, I heard another journalist out here describe it like when you're at the airport and you miss your flight, you're not stranded, right. you're just stuck. So in her mind, it was fair to say they were stuck. And if you were to tell the NASA mission managers that they were stuck on the space station, they were more acceptable to that term because they would say, well, if they're gonna be stuck, the space station's a good place to be stuck as yeah. they continue to work and live on orbit, continuing their mission of a quarter century now of science and research in space. Sure, and essentially with these two people now, Butch and Sonny, on the space station for the next eight months. So that's 80 hours extra per week of work that they can do. They're always short people 
trying to do the things that they're trying to do in space, all of those experiments, all of the things they've done in space and on the space station that have benefited us here on Earth. James, we're going to let you go. Uh, the rocket is safely in orbit with those two astronauts, including our American commander, Nick Haig. And James is safe on the ground, along with those, all of those other people that we saw, all those pictures of space watchers, we like to call them, at Jetty Park, all up and down the Space Coast, enjoying on a Saturday afternoon not just a liftoff, but a landing and the shaking of that sonic boom. We're going to turn you back over to soccer now. Appreciate you staying with us. So glad this went well. well